Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Radusa de Vasileva and I'm a legal scholar and social activist. Today we'll be raising concern about the conditions in Bulgarian custodial and detention facilities. I was personally traveled by a report by the United Nations Committee Against Torture, which came out in December 2017. Unfortunately, didn't receive extensive media coverage and unfortunately didn't stir the political debate it should have. Um, I find this uh, unacceptable because if you actually read the report, you would wonder uh, why Bulgaria is a member state of the European Union at all. You would learn, for instance, that 70%, 70% of people who have been detained did not have access to a lawyer, and this is a major violation of the right to defense. And um, the reason why they didn't have a lawyer was because they were discouraged to do so through manipulations and the use of force. You would also learn that one out of three people has been subjected to um, physical abuse, which can amount to torture, and that most of these instances have been covered up. In the rare uh, cases when uh, there is an investigation, uh, we run into two other problems. First of all, torture is not identified as a separate crime uh, under Bulgarian law, and in addition, there is no legislation in Bulgaria which forbids the use of evidence obtained through uh, torture. So, uh, uh, so clearly uh, this creates uh, ample opportunities for abuse. Uh, the situation in prisons isn't any better. Once again, physical ill treatment seems to be the norm. And in addition, there is rampant corruption. Prisoners have to bribe prison officers to get services or items that should be provided by law. And ultimately, we need to ask ourselves, is this the first red flag Bulgaria has received? Clearly, the answer is no. Um, if you uh, examine case law uh, by uh, the European Court of Human Rights, you would see that Bulgaria has lost plenty of cases exactly because of the horrifying prison conditions. And two years ago, there was even a pilot judgment against Bulgaria, and usually those are rendered when, when the court identifies a system. Problem. Now, NGOs have also raised concern that nothing has been done in the past 20 years in order to improve prison conditions. And um, last but not least, I was uh, I was uh, traveled by another report, this time by the Council of Europe from 2015, which refers to deliberate physical ill treatment, endemic corruption, and deteriorating material conditions as the major problems Bulgaria hasn't overcome uh, in the past 20 years. Um, in addition, they actually issued the public statement and the Council of Europe does that only when it's truly troubled and scandalized by something. So uh, if you read the statement you would uh, learn uh, that the Council of uh, Europe believes that little or nothing has been done uh, with regard to uh, the long-standing uh, problems in Bulgaria. Um, in addition, the State of Affairs highlights a persistent failure by the Bulgarian authorities to address the most fundamental shortcomings and moreover the Council of Europe called for radical change. Now clearly two years later we can see that uh, there's no radical change. Why does this matter? Um, I would use a quotation by Nelson Mandela here. Uh, he said that no one truly knows a nation until one has been inside its jails. A nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens but its lowest ones. Um, and um, of course there is a stigma about prisoners but think about it, nobody should be above the law, and in addition, the only institution that could have any say on punishment is a legitimate court. Anything else is just arbitrary action, uh, which is unacceptable for a democracy. Now, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, I have also published an article on my personal blog, blog. You can read it if you want to. Otherwise, if you're troubled by what you heard, please find your own ways of promoting solidarity, repost my video or make your own. Thank you, bye!